In a previous message, I had mentioned that as we approach and count down to the new year, we ought to take the opportunity to reflect and prepare for what is ahead. This year, 2020, has been extraordinarily different. However, despite some unfortunate concerns which may have impacted us collectively, there are still promising and countless experiences and developments from this year that remind us we are fortunate and blessed across these islands. I feel enormously honored, privileged and distinguished to be the speaker and the presiding officer of the new parliament, which we should feel proud of. Let me start by saying we need to get involved and engaged and keep changing for the better in the new year ahead and to continue to encourage each other in a positive way. There needs to be a sense of self-reliance and to cultivate self-respect. Unfortunately, there are instances where people who believe they are influential, and maybe they are, and they cloak or claim purity over themselves. And they have conducted themselves mischievously and for their own personal gain rather than being humble. They appear on radio and social media to pontificate and give false impression as if they are little white and perfect beings when we know otherwise. So those persons are not worthy of emulation, nor are their examples good to follow in our society. Some are previous politicians, some are lawyers, some are former teachers. What have they done for the country? I can be scolded. We shouldn't go about insulting people. Time will come for all that. My friends, despite that, I think that we find ourselves divided in some instances, but gladly more together as one good, strong community. This togetherness was demonstrated and evidenced based on the manner in which we rise to the occasion when we are required to do so. For example, during COVID, flooding, and other natural disasters we were experienced, there's a sense of unity, thank God, which harnesses the forces that strengthen us rather than those that divide us. This has resulted in us sojourning this far despite all the difficulties of 2020. I want to personally thank our coalition government for their true foresight, vision, and guidance, particularly during the advent of COVID pandemic across the globe, and how we were able to manage and control our outbreak locally in the Cayman Islands. I would like to also thank the people for responding responsibly. There's hope for all of us. As our coalition government institute our policies for growth and development of these islands, and as these programs are being implemented and ex executed by both the public and private sectors, it is worthy to mention that unfortunate developments of 2020 did not overshadow the, the progress and the benefits derived from our coalition government's interventions during the year. Our government assisted all sectors of the society during the COVID experience, and they are still assisting through different programs. They have passed the appropriate and relevant legislations to keep the society functional and economically viable, which gives us hope. I am in, 
indeed appreciative of the people being thankful, considering all that we have experienced and been through in the past year. We could certainly be much worse off. We only need to look at what has happened to our neighbors and family and friends in Honduras, in Nicaragua, and San Andres and Providence. God has blessed us. Don't we realize that? So it begs the questions, what if the coalition government hadn't done things to help our people? We have experienced persons becoming infected with the virus, being treated and have recovered. We have also experienced persons becoming unemployed. This is so troubling and losing their jobs and laid off and the coalition government helped to cushion the adverse effects in the society by providing subventions to assist the unemployed. Our government also made the necessary legislative changes to allow this, our people to access their pensions in order to assist with their financial difficulties. What if in the past we had taken the awful stance of people and hadn't done anything about pensions? What if there were no pensions? What if I hadn't fought the front line and had not put in pensions? So what would we have today to fall back on? We also kept the financial industry vibrant and viable during that precarious time while trying to assist persons in their desperate needs. Going forward, we undoubtedly will depend to a great extent on ourselves and our creativity in the years ahead. Our success will significantly depend on how we conduct ourselves, how we behave and interact with each other as a community. As we end this calendar year, I want to take a moment to express thanks for your support for our government. We have to navigate the future by being innovative and collaborative, and we should be immensely proud to benefit from the phenomenal work of our government, our civil service, all those first responders, our police, people in the National Needs Assessment Unit, our nurses, our doctors, our school teachers, and yes, those in private sector who have worked day and night. This has been a phenomenal year as we responded to the varied challenges we experienced. I encourage all to try to avoid disputes or resolve disputes whenever they arise. It's important that we bring up our children and grandchildren and take care of the most vulnerable in our society. Once we can conform to all these desirable behaviors, we will build better families, which leads to better homes. Building better homes will lead to better communities, and building better communities will lead to a better Caymanian society. Let's extend commendation, as I say, to all our volunteers for the good cause as we continue to grow and develop and build a better society. I anticipate and encourage all patriotic Caymanians and residents alike to mount partnerships with civic organizations in preparing ourselves for a great and promising future. We have given a commitment and that as a House of Parliament, we will ensure that we serve in the interest of our people and that the acts which we pass will be to your benefit. We as a people can't disengage ourselves from the efforts to sustain these islands and thus keep and continuing being successful in our ventures. We all can achieve our full potential once we stay focused and apply ourselves. Capitalize on all the opportunities which may present itself 
as we move into the new year. Let's not forget that we all need to do our part to contribute to the development and growth of these islands. We should freely express our God-given talents and work together for the good and benefit of these islands. We ought not to lose sight of the vision of creating a society of opportunity where all and sundry is a shareholder in our blessed Cayman Islands. I trust that we will commit ourselves to continue to exhibit our Christian principles by caring for the children, for the poor, for our senior citizens, and persons with disabilities. That will help to make a better Cayman Islands. It is this belief system and God's precious guidance that have kept us safe through all our challenges and difficulties, our personal challenges, our family challenges, our friends, the challenges they face. God's precious guidance have kept us safe. So I say to you all, in the advent of the new year, let us learn lessons from the past, but more so, grasp the opportunities for great achievement and hope for a great and better future. We shall plan and organize ourselves as our future can be one of great hope and as a, we achieve our ideals and dreams. A fresh new year is now upon us. So let us remember it's the time to be thankful for the blessings of the past year. Keep being positive at the same time, act selflessly and set positive goals and work hard to implement those goals. In closing, let us remain hopeful and look forward for a promising and productive future. To that end, I am confident that with God's richest blessings, we will continue to progress as we enhance our quality of lives for all in the Cayman Islands. In the Christmas season, we hear many Christmas carols. And one is that talks about a thrill of hope, a thrill of hope for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. I have hope for our country. I believe that our people will make it happen. May God bless all of you and your families.